So first, I would just like to say welcome to, day, to today's Wednesday webinar on our Loom integration with Moodle ISU. And my name is Sasha Johnson, and joining me today are Lance Rowe and Ryan Randall, who are also in the ITRC. And this webinar should be about 20 minutes with time for questions. And so if you do have some questions as we go through the presentation, please feel free to post them in the chat and we will address them when we get to the end. And the, the webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our ITRC video library where our other Wednesday webinars are also hosted. And so today's overview for our presentation is Lance is going to discuss how to utilize the Loom recording tool within Moodle ISU, as well as some best practices to use when recording with Loom, and then how to upgrade your Loom account so that you have the free education account and also the features that are available as part of our integration between Loom and Moodle ISU. So with that, I will go ahead and pass it off to Lance so he can get started. All right, perfect. So this is one integration that I'm actually really excited about. Just from the support side, I use Loom on a really constant basis, daily basis, that I'm using Loom to create instant recordings and then sharing that to provide feedback, support. And it's cool that we can utilize this tool in Moodle. And so what we're going to talk about is just some examples of how you might use Loom in your Moodle course. Um, specifically with the forum discussion, uh, assignment, and providing instructor feedback. Um, one of the things you'll note with our integration, and I'll just highlight these in here, is um, currently anyone who is on Moodle um, in our instance can use the Loom recorder. Um, if you don't have an account, those users will have a five-minute recording limit um, versus those who actually upgrade to the Loom education account will have much longer time. And we'll go more in detail of what those specific features on are later on in this presentation. So let's go ahead and hop into a course and talk about using uh, Loom. So Loom is right integrated into our HTML editor. So anywhere that the where you can edit text, um, you should have access to the Loom screen recorder. So we're going to use look at the form as an example. And um, you can use Loom internally and externally. Loom has a Chrome extension that you can use or their desktop client as well. So I'll go ahead and just showcase what that looks like. So here we have a form post and I'm gonna show you what it looks like externally when you're just using the, the client of Loom and, and getting that into your course. So I'm just gonna launch the Loom application and you've got a couple of options here when Loom uh, opens up. So you can do camera only is what we're currently on, or you can do full screen and camera and your microphone. And notice that you can toggle these off depending on what it is you want to record. So we'll go ahead and use this as an example. I'm just going to record my screen, my web camera, and my audio. Um, I'll go ahead and click start recording. And then Loom is going to count down for me to start. So now I can go with Loom and I can capture anything that I want to on my screen, highlight, all those things. If I come down here, there is a pen tool that's an ink so I can highlight things and eventually that will vanish. So then I can go and highlight, annotate on the page and those things will eventually go away. So Loom is pretty helpful with some of those things. I can also move around the bubble of myself. So if I'm covering up content that I want to show, I can easily just click and drag and move it. So once I'm done creating my recording, I'll go ahead and do stop recording. It's going to open up in a new window. This is a video that's stored on my Loom account now. And I can just go ahead and copy the link of that. And I can go and just paste the link. It does add extra code. So I need to work with our admins of what is going on there potentially. But with this in here, I can then preview and see that recording that I just made. So Loom is really cool because it really is instantaneous video that you can quickly capture something and then post it within seconds. So I can just play that. So now I can go with Loom and, and I can capture any that recording. Um, I'll go ahead and save this. And of course, that was using 
just the desktop Loom client. And we have a filter in Moodle that when it sees that Loom URL, it automatically embeds it in the page. So students don't have to leave Moodle to watch the recording. They can stay in Moodle and watch that. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the internal integration that we were really excited about. So if I go and reply, I'm gonna to go to advanced. And then this icon here is our record screen feature. And of course, Loom is what's powering that. So you see that similar interface of the items that we can configure on the screen. Again, um, we can decide if we wanna capture screen and camera, screen only and camera only. Since I'm in a discussion forum, I'm there may not be that use to capture my screen. So I'll just do my camera only. And then these are both correct. I've got the right camera and the right audio selected so then I can start recording. This is where you would see that five minute limit if you're using this tool without your, without being logged into your account or not having a Loom account at all. So when I click start recording, I get that same, <coughs> excuse me, I get that same countdown and then I can start recording. I'm not too worried about my screen because again, I said I only wanna capture my camera. So I'll go ahead and do stop recording. Loom is gonna provide a preview window so then I can watch that. Um, these buttons here allow me, if I messed up pretty bad, like that cough at the beginning, I could just start a recording over. I can cancel or delete that recording, get the link to it, but right now I'm just gonna insert it into our page. So again, you get the Loom URL right there. And then I can preview and, and watch that. And then of course, post to form. And then now you can see that your thread is starting to, to fill with those Loom videos. So you can really start having that interaction with video in the form pretty seamlessly. And we'll talk uh, again, some benefits about loom over the the moodle built-in recorder that's currently there still now we'll go ahead and talk about um, assignments because again um, this is one of those things that anywhere that the html editor is you'll also have access to loom so for an, uh, for assignment submission you can see like this is one that i did earlier as a student in the student role that I just added my Loom URL, and now the instructor can watch that. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like on the grade side. So if I go to view all submissions, notice that it automatically converts it here so I can watch it from this page, assign a grade, or I can hop right in and watch the video here. Notice it gives me the, the URL in the PDF area. And then of course I can leave my comments. So very, helpful for those video type assignments where you want the student to record themselves and submit something. Now, the really cool part and the part that I'm most excited about is providing feedback to your students. So say in the traditional sense, you've got a student who uploads their paper and not only do you want to provide those comments and things like that, but you also want to provide just an overall video summary of that student's work. So what we can do, I'll go ahead and remove that old link. So I've got my cursor in the feedback comments area, and then I'm gonna launch Loom, and then make sure my settings are correct. And then in this case, I wanna capture both my camera and the screen, and then I'm gonna start recording. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that I record the entire screen. We get our countdown and then I can start essentially providing commentary on the student's work. And we'll specifically talk about some extra things, but notice that in here you can still add your comments if you still wanna do that. But again, with the video, then I can tie those comments together to provide a full in-depth um, feedback to this student. And just if I was talking to them in person about their paper. Once I'm done providing feedback, I'll go ahead and just make sure my cursor is back in the feedback comments area and hit finish recording. And then I'll insert that recording. And again, I can preview it and I could watch that recording as needed. And then I can go ahead and give that student a grade. 
So one of the things when we talk about this, when we're providing feedback, so these are some just best practices when you're using recording to provide that, that feedback. So you want to cover themes. You want to save like the grammatical errors or the nitty gritty type stuff for the comments of the document. So cover themes, you, you want to just be broad of points that they made, different things like, like that. The other thing with Loom, it can be very easy to fall into wanting to script uh, something up before you record. And the whole point of this is we want to have that natural communication and we're doing it asynchron asynchronously pretty much. So if you write a script, that's just going to add more workflow, more workload to your workflow, I should say. Um, like I said, the best way of I envisioning you using this is to, to just talk naturally, just like if the student was in the room and you're um, helping them with their paper. Uh, this leads into that next point of it's an opportunity to coach your students, not to just discuss about points and grading, but actually use it to provide your student ideas of how they can improve their skills. And again, Loom, it does take some practice to talk to the camera, but it's something that is easy to, to do the more you do it. And so those are just my tips for providing that feedback when using any sort of video capture to, to do that for students. Now let's go ahead and talk about your account. Again, we don't have any specific licensing with Loom. We're just leveraging their free plan of what they provide us. Here is this loom.com forward slash education. Down here, there's two parts where you can first sign up for your account, make sure you use your ISU Gmail. And then once you get their basic account set up, you can come back to this page and go to the get verified. And it's just a simple Google form. You answer their questions. Um, they do say it takes um, one to two business days for them, but I've noticed that sometimes it's quicker than that. But they essentially just flip the switch and turn your basic account into a Loom for Education account. And then some of the things that come with that is you get unlimited videos, your recordings are 45 minutes rather than that five that we talked about earlier. You also get your videos can get automatic transcripts. So it's still hit or miss, but it, it's, I found it be useful where it will caption my recordings for me so that those have those captions included. Just some great features for it being free for educators. Um, now, specifically to our integration with Loom, um, there's some benefits as well. So when we create videos using Loom, those are stored on your Loom account not on Moodle. So if you get those really long recordings, it's not going to bog down your Moodle page or when you have to do backup and restores, that stuff just is stored locally and we're simply linking to it. So you're gonna save up some space and, and Moodle is gonna work a lot better in those environments too. As we mentioned, so the non-Loom account users are limited to five minutes versus the Loom education users are 45. And both of those are larger compared to Moodle's built-in WebRCT recorder, which is a limit of two minutes. So regardless, um, both of the Loom options provide you a little bit more of that flexibility with the length of recordings. Um, Loom videos can be automatically captioned. You can easily record your screen in Moodle. So if you pull up a presentation or like we showed about earlier with showing feedback and doing one-on-one -on -one type videos, this is just a, a great, easy, quick tool for that. Loom videos automatically embed. So whenever it's Moodle sees that Loom URL, it's going to automatically embed it so you have the full video. And then the other big benefit of why we wanted to pursue this and get it integrated is the Loom videos are an MP4 video format. So regardless of what device you or your students use, you're gonna have better success with the MP4. Even though the AUG file is an open source video type, we've found some issues with it playing on some Apple devices. So Loom is great because we get the MP4. And again, that's gonna be more available to different kinds of users who are in your course. So thank you all for joining us today. If you want to get a usable version of this slide on your own computer, you can hold up a QR 
reader device and it'll open up on your own device. So those orange underlines will actually work as links on your computer. Um, and what that would let you do is you can see written instructions. We have many of them, Tiger Tracks articles to help you use Loom or any other Moodle feature um, for Moodle ISU. We also have a link to our ITRC video library of recordings, just like this one. Soon, this one will be added to the video library and we'll have captions. So you'll be able to look at it again if we went through something a little quickly. You also, even before we get that up, you can reach out to us. You can email us at itrc at isu.edu. You can call us at 208. 282-5880. And for those of you who are in Pocatello, you can scroll down to the O Bowler Library and then go down the stairs or take the elevator to room B17 and meet with us in person there. Next week, we'll have another Wednesday webinar at the same time. And that one will be, I believe, the last in our series on the new edition of the Quality Matters rubric. So we'll be looking at specific review standard eight and the details about it. And you can click on that link and see our future calendar of um, Wednesday webinars. We do make sure to get them into ISU today as often as we can. And we also add them to the ISU events calendar. So if you're ever curious about what's coming up in another Wednesday or two. Those are different ways you can find out if you don't feel like emailing us or calling us. So thank you all for joining us.